Good evening, here in Edith Marion House, near the Goethe Arnhem. All right, the Goethe Arnhem Hill and hopefully also internationally some friends who try to be with us today on this birthday of Rudolf Steiner. Um, and from the general anthroposophical section we thought it could be the day for a kind of overview of the year 1924 the developments after the Christmas conference. This Christmas conference played an enormous role in all our lives the last, the last few weeks and months. A lot of anthroposophical groups worldwide were preparing, commemorating, but also asking themselves, what now? What is the result of it? What was the result of it historically? And what can we do today in our world situation with our forces, how to incarnate this impulse of a human development? And so it could be a good day today, Dr. Steiner's day, birth day, um, to ask ourselves what happened historically at the Goethe Arnhem and then uh, in some other places after the Christmas conference. We can say historically, but always if we try to do this in a kind of inner awareness, I think we transcend also a little bit history. Hopefully it will become a kind of an encounter tonight with Rudolf Steiner, he himself, asking this kind of spiritual mindfulness, this kind of spiritual lifestyle, life habit, how he f went into this fight, I would say, of the year 24, because it was not all peaceful. There were enormous shadows um, in the world, in politics, in society. So trying to bring the Christmas impulse, sometimes he said a Christmas impulse, not only a Christmas conference impulse, but a Christmas impulse, a birth impulse, a new spiritual impulse to bring it out of this carpentry shop to the world. This wasn't an easy endeavor. Today my um, story, <laughs> my telling situation will be limited um, from the 1st of January 1924 to the last address. So it won't be the complete year 1924. I won't go into the sickbed. Um, the sickbed time of Dr. Steiner, which started in the beginning of October, when he was so ill that he needed constant treatment and had to cancel all through the lectures, conferences. This will be, this will pay, play, of course, a part in the general anthroposophical sections, um, evenings and um, lectures this year, but this will start in October. So my um, main concern today, my main purpose is to bring into life again, to encounter what happened in this ninth month before. And as we know from human development, nine months, this is an enormous um, period. If we think of the embryonic state of the pre-birth date. Now we talked about the birth, Christmas birth impulse, but in another, in another, um, from another perspective, we could also say these nine months were a preparing period for a lot of developments which came later. Because in this nine months, Steiner was able at least to show in some of the sections of the new founded School for Spiritual Science how the work is intended to be. So I hope I will can reveal this or um, show this tonight. Mm. And maybe we can start directly chronologically. So just to bring in mind the, f the first day of the year 1924, uh, how it was here on the hill in Dornach, because then we are still in the Christmas conference, which ended in the first year. So in the morning before the conference and went on, Steiner had an early morning meeting with anthroposophical doctors, quite typical for him. He has a, had a huge program 
uh, of the conference, but beside there were other meetings. So he started exoterically, I would say, the de this day with his doctor's meeting. Esoterically, we don't know. This is always a kind of being aware that we don't know much or sometimes I think we know nothing about Steiner's inner life, how he started the day, how he welcomed the new year, how he did it, inwardly meditative we don't know. For sure he did, but how? So the only thing we can say, because it is noted and we have stenographs and editions that he met the doctors at half part eight. And then, uh, which in a way it is also unconventional or isn't it? The first day of the year and the festive conference and before he has another meeting and then going deep into practical questions about how to treat patients case reports, not metaphysical considerations about new mystery medicine, but directly into very practical challenges of treating patients. And then afterwards the conference went on and if you go again back to the um, edition of the Christmas conference um, talks, you can see that one major theme in the morning is the building of the second Goethe Anum. He designed or he showed the principal forms, but also the financing was a theme and so on. It happened many other things today. Also in the afternoon, the so-called route, a so-called uh, kind of a meeting with a certain breakdown of Rudolf Steiner. This is a deep topic and a questionable topic in anthroposophical historical writings, what happened in this late afternoon. Obviously Steiner at least fainted. There were questions about was it an in intoxication, what happened exactly. It is not revealed by history now, but there was a very difficult situation. And also next morning when he started a course for the young doctors, He's, he first uh, first time in his life he lectured in sitting next morning, so 2nd of January. So something really happened, but beyond that, or he went on with the evening lecture on that New Year's day. And um, yeah, I think most of you know this ending of the Christmas conference because it was the ending. Uh, also deeply moving sentences, also of thanks expressed by Louis Verbeck and Steiner also said some words um, reflecting this Christmas conference and saying that it was um, the spirit of the Goethe Anum which in a way enabled him to do what he did. And then so started this year or these nine months of my Mm, narrative uh, presentation tonight. Most of you know that Steiner um, was um, 63 years old or he became 63 on the 27th of February 1924. That means now 100 years later, 163, an important date he said in his karma lectures. Um, finishing these nine, seven year cycles. And also this possibility of retrospective penetration into the spiritual sphere of these seven year cycles. I don't want to go into this detail now, but in fact he said it is an important step of aging. In bilancing this whole nine months, it is unbelievable uh, how he did it. Because in a way he started weak, not only by this maybe toxic situation um, and this fainting, but in general Steiner's health was damaged in a way. This is maybe not the theme for tonight, but if we consider a little bit more in depth than the sickbed time. He had only limited forces anymore. 
and some people could really observe it during this nine months, but it started early. And it has to do with the destruction of the first building. It has to do, from my perspective, also for this living in an atmosphere of hate and aggression, living in an atmosphere of civil war. Civil war in Germany and uh, quite um, an abyss coming closer and closer. And how he managed in this nine months to go out and giving this almost 400 lectures, uh, not only lectures for the members in concerning the main theme in 24, this was the destiny theme for the intern lectures for the members of the society, but also many other lectures for professional groups about medicine, about education, about curative education and other lectures for the priests of the Christian community, lectures about agriculture. We just had it to go to on this wonderful Kubowitz Memorial Conference, but it was not at all a memorial conference. It was the fresh wind of the future. Thousand farmers and gardeners came from many, many countries to be here um, at the Goethe Annum Hill to concentrate on the Kobowitz impulse and um, what has happened since in this development. So, but it all started in this year and also the esoteric lessons he started mid of February with the first class, the so-called first class. I will come to it a little bit. Not only many, many lectures, I forgot some let's say, for the workmen at the Goethe Arnum, for the artists, for the eurythmists, for the actors. Hundreds and hundreds of lectures, but it was not only a, a, year, a year of lecturing. And as I mentioned in the case of the farmers, it was not just a lecture course, it was the foundation of a new life field. Popovic's impulse that means the birth of the biologic dynamic movement, but it was not the only movement who started in NV4, so we couldn't say the whole field of curative education started anew. It was not only a lecture course, it was only that Steiner visited this first institute, a little house near Jena, and there will also be a wonderful meeting this year uh, it was the birth of a new type, a new hmm, humanistic um, accompaniment of uh, children and later also adults in need of special care. What we call now social inclusive development or because it's not all curative education. It's not all education. It is partly but it was a new field for the anthroposophical movement. It started in 24. And maybe not so much in our vision as that Steiner enabled in September um, groups of actors. Um, they came to Dornach, existing groups of um, teams. Um, he enabled them for a new or helped them or supported them in starting new initiatives for another kind of theater place. And so this is also a kind of a new profession, maybe not in full blossom at the day, at the time now, but there was a possibility. So new life fields and the other ones, the older ones already begun, anthroposophical medicine, Waldorf education, but also this initiative for religious renewal, the, what we call the Christian community, he supported them to go on. So the beginning life fields and the new life fields. Um, and we can easily understand that Steiner had to travel around. They couldn't all come to Dornach. So the majority of these lectures, they happened here but then some other cities in 
Switzerland, it was mainly Zurich again and Bern, and in Bern was an important educational meeting there, um, very important. He also went, of course, again to Stuttgart, where especially the Waldorf School was, but also the German Society, the Anthroposophical Society, I mean, but also the Clinical Thera Therapeutical Institute of Dr. Noll Husemann, Pipers and Palmer, so an anthroposophical clinic. But then he went to, I mentioned already, Kobawitz, Silesia, now in Poland, a long, long train travel from Basel SBB. He went from Stuttgart to Prague by train, a big meeting in Prague. He went to Netherlands, to Arnheim. He visited, of course, of course the first Waldorf school in Den Haag and the little clinic impulse of Dr. Seilmanns, even if the main course was an educational one and a general anthroposophical one in Arnhem. He went to Paris again, also not only general anthroposophy but also medicine. He went to London, to Torquay, southwest of London. Traveling, if you have reduced um, forces um, by uh, trains, um, wasn't so easy at all. A lot of organization, hundreds of people coming. I think it was quite exhausting, to be honest. But beyond that, a time of writing, we don't know exactly when, mostly during the night, several books came into life the so-called leading thoughts written by Steiner, published since um, mid of February as well. At the end, quite an enormous book. And this year we will have happen the first bilingual edition, German-English. One of the most important books of Steiner ever written. Um, in the nights, my, most often weekly, but at the end, an enormous book. In the beginning, it was a series of articles, and not all are now composed in the leading thoughts. Some other of the articles, the articles were all had also the, all the headline to the members, to the members. It was a weekly address from Dr. Steiner to the members of the society. This was totally anew. Not only that he overtook the president, the chair of the society, but weekly he went to the members. Um, and some of these articles is the, are the composition of the book Leading Thoughts, others they are published under another title, Letters to the Members. Yeah. Then he went on to publish his autobiographical writing, My Course of Life, also weekly by uh, the next text. And then he was preparing the first textbook of the high school and in the field of medicine because maybe this was the most urgent task to bring an impulse into this field medicine in society and together with Ita Wegman he prepared the first volume of several volumes intended fundamentals of therapy was the later name you could really say it's enough those lectures, those life fields, those people, those journeys, and then books, what else, to prepare the second building. Just when we came now to Edith Marion House from the Goethe Arnum, in looking back, the image that there was nothing. I mean, the carpentry shop, which is quite small, especially if you look here from the, from the Marion House to the hill, without the Goethe Arnum, it is very small. It wasn't just nothing, it was empty. Of course, there was House Duldeck and... But from seen from here, it was waiting for a building impulse, a second. But if you ever have <laughs> tried to build a house, it is an enormous endeavor, it is an enormous yeah, activity needed and to prepare it in such a building 
And it means a lot, not only to have a model, and Steiner designed it in March, as we know, March 24, in three days, but then to go to the authorities and to bring the plans to the authorities and to discuss it and, and the whole question of money and financing, it was ongoing. It's really enough, we could say, but it was not. It was much more in his daily life. And there is no book where you can really read Steiner's daily life in this year 24. This is not written and I think it can't be, can't be written because it is not documented at all and there are no notebooks in this, in this direction. We only know that he did enormous things in the, in the sphere of art as well. So he was drawing, he created eurythmy forms, he took part in the samples in this when they trained for the next eurythmy performance. He was in, not all the time, but sometimes reshaped a little bit. He reshaped a lot in the Ita Wegmann clinic, the clinical therapeutical institute in Alesheim. He went to the visits and heard what the doctors are doing or what is prepared for a patient and gave additional advices, saw many, many patients, new remedies were developed in this year because he said in this case we wouldn't need this and this and this substance in a special composition and in those years this was the way to creating a new medicine together with Oskar Schmidl, the pharmacist. Really enough, but no, because the Waldorf School I already mentioned, it was going, of course, but he still was the teacher of the teachers. And he went there regularly to see the faculty, to go into the faculty conference, but also to go into the classes. He saw individual pupils, he saw individual classes because they wanted to see him. And so he really took part in the life of the school. And then, which are not counted, these countless meetings, individual meetings with members of the society or little groups, esoteric groups or non-esoteric groups. The only figure I came across was that Murray Steiner said only in September he met 400 people in his studio in the carpentry complex, 400, they were counted. So it's difficult, it's difficult to confront or to, to get a, to come in touch or to get a feeling, what does it mean? I mean, we didn't come together now to adore Steiner and saying, oh, he must have been a hero to, to manage all this. This is not at all our job. But in a way, it is, it is unbelievable. And um, it is hard to understand how he could. Only these nine months, and sometimes I think only one day. Um, and it was, I said, I mentioned it before, a very difficult surrounding. I don't mean now the social situation here in Dornach, which also was not so easy all the time and is not easy all the time, but I mean the political surrounding. Because in a way Steiner was very sensitive. Hopefully we are all sensitive and we feel if we are living in a war situation or pre-war situation. And war situation that could be really armies and destruction and murdering of people, but sometimes it's more it's not completely in the physical world, but it's going on. And if we follow a little bit the politi political course of the year 24, which I won't do tonight, we can get a feeling of this battlefield. In some countries it was a physical battle, and in other it will come. So in Kobowitz, Steiner said in one of these, not a lectures, but this personal conversation, Europe is sitting on a volcano and doesn't realize it. 
It must have been quite horrible for him to see and to feel and the other ones were not awakened. So the, he was talking personally uh, about the coming of destruction of Central Europe, the collapse of the cities which will follow. And he saw a kind, he anticipated a kind of war, also physical war and destruction, because in a way, if there is no change, it will go in this direction. So we are always surprised what happened. Uh, let's say 6th of October and since in Israel. But in a way, having been in the country two times last year, a lot of friends, they were absolutely aware that it can come a culmination of abyss. They did not know why, but they had this government and they had a post political social situation in the country and then they had also forces as the Hamas, so nobody could foresee what happened, but that there will come a very difficult development. So I won't, I will not compare, but I sometimes I have the Felix Steiner didn't, couldn't say this will happen that day. But in a way, if these problems are not solved or even radicalized all the day, and, and, then, and then suddenly it happens there or there, and then this is a huge surprise, but that it can come or it will for sure come if there is no change. I think that this is one of the elements which made Dr. Steiner's life so serious. A lot of people are always asking, always this serious face, why not smiling? And, and they, sometimes I was asked um, if there are no photographs of Steiner smiling, because he was obviously a humorful person. And then quite often I answered and said, I don't think that he liked to smile in front of photographs because they waited for smiles. And he was not a person, he was a philosophy of freedom. So why should he smile in that moment? So in general he had humor, a lot of humor. But on the other side, part of the seriousness of his life is to see what is going on and what will come in the direction of genocidal euthanasia, these driving forces. What is Steiner saying in the leading thoughts? Michael Chester is total serious because he is so connected to the destiny of mankind and he sees these others, non-humanistic forces. So in a way I think it's good to take into account that Steiner was aware of the world in which he is living. He's not only describing in the leading thoughts the spiritual world atmosphere, he was living in this atmosphere. It is not so easy. I mean, we can understand he, he did the sculpture of Ariman, but that means he lived with these forces. He perceived them. And the other ones as well, hopefully, are sure. But this is one of these mysteries if we try to understand how he lived. Maybe it would be necessary to understand how is it if you have this quite real near you, not only as a thought or in reading the leading thoughts, then Ariman is in the text, but this is only a reflection, a mirror of the reality, we can say in the cosmos, but including the earth. But political situation were already there. It was not only coming. I mean, Stalin was already there and Mussolini as well. And Hitler, yes, there was the public trial. I don't know if there were any notice in Germany three days ago, the 24th of February, 100 years ago, there started the public trial against Hitler, Ludendorff, and those who tried to get the power on this famous 9th of November 1923. So on the 24th of February 1924, this was the opening of the trial against Hitler, Ludendorff and the other ones and ended with a big success of them. Even if 
Hitler had to go for a certain time under privileged condition and this was more a little bit respecting the laws uh, to Landsberg to the prison but he had the best conditions there to write, to study and the end result was the book Mein Kampf. You can also say they enabled him to create the agenda partly of the Holocaust, partly of what he wanted to do else. This was enabled by the German justice <laughs> and the persecutor, not the lawyer of Hitler, the persecutor said in the process at the end, Hitler is a highly talented man who from humble origins has achieved a respected position in public life through serious and hard work. He devoted himself to the ideas that filled him to the point of self-sacrifice and did his duty as a soldier in the highest degree. The fact that he exploited the position he created for himself in a self-serving manner cannot be held against him. But the prosecutor said it, not his lawyer. So just as a little picture out of political life, 100 years ago, 103 years ago, and I, but my, my center is Steiner, but I mean, he was not sitting in, in the court, but in a way, I think he had a perception a perception and it I was touched this year when I followed this news from the United States of this um, gas chamber death in Alabama you know these messages when it was clearly said that there is a person um, um, died by um, yeah this toxic substance um, nitrogen um, by gas um, and the authorities legalized it and there was a certain discussion about this but I couldn't come across the historical relation because it was the 8th of February so also 100 years and more or less three weeks that the first man in the United States of America died in the first gas chamber death in Nevada and the declaration was there that it is the fastest and most humanistic way to kill a human being. So, and that it came again this year in the news, um, nitrogen was the maybe alarming substance and it was a slow death instead of a fast death. But it was again in the news, so history doesn't recapitulate itself, history never copies itself, but in a way, in a way, forces are there and unsolved situation. And Steiner said at the first day of the year, so in the last um, lecture um, of the Christmas conference, if you look out, into the world today there is and has been for years an extraordinary amount of destructive material. Forces are at work that foreshadow the abysses into Western civilization is heading. What is here translated by destructive material is in German Vernichtungsstoff. This is more the substance of destruction and it's remarkable also with this nitrogen substance and we must realize in another context that the Arimanic powers are increasingly breaking into historical development everywhere. So this is described then in the leading thoughts but maybe the perception was even more traumatic than the description in the leading thoughts. So evil as a reality, as a very powerful reality, Steiner infaced it, but 
he worked against it. So the Christmas impulse has to do with going out just with the opposite, opposite and being aware that it will be a fight. But a fight not in the sense of the armies, but in the sense of what is again described in the leading thoughts, Michael and Ariman and yeah, but Steiner also was astonished sometimes, I would say, and we are as well, I would say, how the old ghosts of the past come again. So he really, in a, in a worldly quotation, says, never before have the ghosts of the last age that preceded us walked among us so audibly as in the present. He means the old ghosts of the 19th century. And these ghosts were a certain form of materialism, nationalism, aggressive imperialism, colonialism, anti-Semitism. And a lot of people had the idea that at the beginning of the 20th century, this is the past. But a lot of people at the beginning of the 21st century had also the feeling it's over. But it came again. It comes again, again and again, in different new shapes. And now we come to the lighter aspect of it. I only wanted a little bit the atmosphere to describe a little bit. But now the focus will be for the second part of the lecture or of this birthday reflection, what he did. How to make the Goetheanum spiritually effective? This was Dinah's main question. How to form this new impulse? And there we had yeah, our um, trial to understand deeper the Christmas conference this year. It was this trial to build up, to shape an effective anthroposophical society movement with the School for Spiritual Science as the central core of it to go out. To go out in this, in this world, which is not only overshadowed, but Ariman is part of it. And then a lot of innocent people, which has nothing to do with Ariman. So he's spoiling situations, he's deforming but to go out and enable people not only to activate their innocence, but also to, yeah, to find the good. Not going out in the sense of missionary movements, but impulses of transforming the society in the direction of the good. And how to become effective as a social group I don't want to talk about Steiner's suffering with the Anthroposophical Society the years before. I don't want to talk now because this was Christmas conference and this is past, how he came to the decision to overtake the chair. But now he was the one. And he said clearly representing Anthroposophy to the world requires a completely different style doesn't it? And that's what prompted me to take over, to take on the chairmanship. To show what is needed. To really, to show it. How I want, how I would like Anthroposophy to be represented by the society. He had to show it by doing it, by writing to the members, by doing a lot of other things, this was needed. He would have been happy if somebody else would have done it, but there was nobody. So he went on for nine months to show how anthroposophy can be presented to the members, but also to the non-members, how it can be developed a world society for anthroposophy, an effective world society 
with broad-minded spirits, with a kind of a hard organ in Dornach at the Goethe Anum, but then corresponding not only by weekly articles, but also with the other anthroposophical initiatives in the world, how a school for spiritual science could be built up here in Dornach as a kind of a spiritual center, a school for spiritual science which has also the challenge to face, to incarnate anthroposophy or to help anthroposophy to come into these life fields. Anthroposophy was there now, but it has to be it has to be taught and it has to be incarnated in the concrete reality of education, medicine, agriculture, religious life, arts life, doing this, creating impulses for all these life fields to develop, creating a teaching method, an incarnating method, a method of possibilities to learn and to go out. A high school is always a place where people can come to learn, to listen, to understand, but also to find new methods of changing the world. And also a high school who has in mind that now there are initiatives. Steiner went so often, I said to Stuttgart, he opened a faculty for education here in Dornach, which has a certain dimension for the whole world, for the humanistic impulse in anthroposophy and in education in general, but also a real school which was started anew and then Steiner wanted also to help some existing schools. He has been to England over years now and he met a lot of state school teachers interested in anthroposophy. So also transforming existing schools, creating new schools. It is not a school for spiritual science who is doing that, supporting, helping. That means a university or a high school which is then also going out, which is not only located on one place. So the teachers came to the place here, but he also went to them. It is also a new type of uh, high school, I would say, because it's in a way, it's, it's breathing. It's not only as in a typical high school, if you have luck, you have good teachers, and then you go out. So, and do whatever you want. But this is a type of a university where there were established human relationships. So the so-called students, they keep the relation and they bring the fruits of their practical activities back to the heart. And the heart is growing by what people do. So it is not only in one direction, it is also this, is this breathing quality to give and to receive and to grow. So in a way Steiner said the Goethe Anum is absolutely without any power and he can't work in the world if there are not groups of people relating to it, taking off the impulse, bringing it in their life fields and also referring again. So this, there was no building here, there were only but it started, slow, but it started. And now I had this very practical example, education, but also the other life fields. Some of them, they were almost visible. Let's say medicine is always visible. The doctors, you can identify them by the white coats. No, but in fact, we had two anthroposophical clinics at this time. They were visible. And one Waldorf school in Stuttgart and a little one in the Netherlands, they were visible other fields, let's say natural science, this wasn't so visible. Okay, there was the so-called glass house here in Dornach, but then there were other natural scientists, Goetheanists, talented people, 
they were not, they had no building, but they were there. And they, so Steiner asked Günther Wachsmuth, their section leader, and Steiner said, um, Wachsmuth said in his memory, he discussed the tasks for each area of work with us. So he discussed the tasks with each, with natural science, with Wachsmuth, but also with Elisabeth Frede, astronomy, with Albert Steffen about literature, and also, I think, under philosophical publication, how to create a culture of, yes, that our word is going out in a written form. So, in a, it was no wonder or not an accident that Albert Steffen was also the leader of the of this publication organ, Das Goetheanum, because it's one of the most important tools of an anthroposophical impulse going out in a written form weekly. And so the, the responsible person was the section leader at this time, which makes absolutely sense, even it took a lot of time of poor Albert Steffen, because weekly publications are difficult to achieve. And with Mary Steiner, of course, Steiner was working all the time on speech and theater, eurythmy and music. And very practical also on the stage and creating new forms, as I mentioned. So in a way, they prepared what we call the so-called sections, which are faculties of a school for spiritual science incarnating or opening the way for anthroposophy as a living being to impulse, to recreate, to inspire the living field of art, of natural science, and so on. So sections also partly from a spiritual point of view, I would say spheres of which were open to the Michael light but also had a, a nursery responsibility, uh, closely related to practical needs of life. So, and sections also, they were all formed by a collaboration of Rudolf Steiner and the section leader. Um, kind of a dual principle, two people, Steiner and Wegmann, created this Fundamentals of Therapy textbook. And he really had the feeling it had to go out of a collaboration. But then there was a group of doctors coming, the young doctors, let's say, after the Christmas conference, and they were forming a kind of a circle around them. And then the, the inner impulse by the circle could go out into the world. So the sections, as Ita Wegman once put it, said, the sections are esoteric communities. So, in this sense, there is a kind of an inner impulse, and then um, there is human beings relate to it and relate to each other. So, it started anew and in a kind of also a spiritual dialogue with this Michaelic world. But don't forget the society. He took over the chair of the society which was really the social basic of all these section activities. Uh, the basic in two senses, in the sense or in the direction of economy and enabling a high school to live at all. You need a lot of many thousand people that they can afford a school for spiritual science. So they enabled it, but on the other side, the society was a study community um, carrying in itself by the branches, by the working groups, a kind of cultivation of anthroposophical thoughts, feeling and will impulses. The society was a network of people really not only studying anthroposophy, but incarnated it in themselves maybe not primarily in economy and in medicine, but in human cell lives. And this was creating a social substance which was absolutely needed for the next step. 
and maybe third, a society man, meant also they were not only anthroposophists for themselves, but in a way also for the public. So the society was the first organ where anthroposophy became visible. And when Steiner gave a lecture, I mentioned Kobowitz or Breslau, who did the announcement. It was the society, of course. The society invited Steiner to come. The society designed the program in correspondence with him. The society was renting the room. The society, and so on and so on. So a total needed social structure to allow Steiner to become active. This is not just nothing. I mean, people interested in anthroposophy, that's the one part. And those people existed since the beginning of the 20th century and they still exist. But a society commitment means to create a tool that enables anthroposophy to penetrate, to incarnate, to come. So an enormous social challenge to create such a serving society and to make this more effective. Steiner took over the chair because it was very self-centered in the years before, a lot of inner crisis and so on, but the society was so needed for this Michaelic impulse. And Steiner now did a lot for the society. I mentioned that he overtook the chair. I mentioned that he was publishing the weekly articles. And then he signed all the membership cards. We know that he signed 12,000 membership cards, which is, takes some time. Um, but he said it is a human relationship, a little one, but most of the people he knew. <laughs> but even those who had he not in mind, he was writing the name very carefully. And with his leading thoughts, he said, we try to establish or a kind of a spiritual organism because the center of the society is of course anthroposophy. But how to raise the entire membership to a common awareness of the nature of the anthroposophical society and the being of anthroposophy? Of course, they all had a clue what is anthroposophy, but sometimes the images or they were quite different from each other. And how could they come closer together on a spiritual plan? And that's what Steiner started by the lecture course Anthroposophy in Introduction, how he named this in January 1924, an instruction also what it is, but also how it has to be presented in the public. But then he went on to create these leading thoughts, also saying we have a lot of lecture cycles or books since 20 years, but we need a central line in it. And then if, if the members and the branches, they see the central line, the central motifs, maybe then they can see, oh, in this course, in this course, in this book, so it's also a study guiding line, but more or less for the human consciousness. It's not only to study, but also by studying to meet, to encounter the essence of anthroposophy, but as a society, this is the important thing. He published the leading thoughts for the society members. I mean, nowadays we can say it's for everybody. So it's in a bookshop and everybody who's interested or what is anthroposophy, read the leading thoughts. It's good as an advice, but we should keep in mind it was written and published for the society members for a reinforcement of the society as a tool, but also as a spiritual tool, not only as a group of financing he did a lot for the society. This was just my topic, now the society. And don't forget the karma lectures. Because the main purpose of the karma lectures be and all interesting details towards the philosophy of what is a human being. What is the human being as 
as a being who is able to incarnate and reincarnate, how destiny is possible. So a lot of deep questions, anthropologic questions, what is a human being as a carrier of destiny? This is all very interesting and Steiner goes very deep into knowledge of human being and also then second part the course of history if human beings are not only the carrier of their individual lives but also of historical impulses who is shaping world history Steiner is saying human beings not economy as Marx said more or less and not ideas said, as some philosophers said, but he's saying human beings. They are the carrier of history. They, they bring impulses and they learn and they change and they come back. So this is a second enormous point. But then it's coming to the third and this is the culmination of and the, the, the original purpose of the Karma Lecture. And what is this group? what we call the anthroposophical society from. Because human beings, they are carrier of the history, but he said they are not alone. He said it is part of a research result that we can say human beings, they come in groups. And he said the only chance to, to meet somebody new is between life, between death and life. So because during your biography, more or less you are moving in your group. He doesn't mean a little group. I mean, it's a little bit more those who are with me now. And this has a destiny, a common destiny. Some of them is a very narrow destiny, but also a wider destiny. At least we are at the same time here. And this means a lot to be incarnated now in 24 and not 70 years ago or 90 years or 110. So it is also a destiny to be part of a destiny group. But then there are more narrow, direct destinies. And what about this group, what we call anthroposophical society? If this is true, then this society is also a destiny society. And then he's revealing where he's from and what kind of Michaelic impulse it is. The original task um, and challenge of this society. So he goes deep back to the where is the society from. And in a way, this is the purpose of this core of these lectures, even if he started only in mid of July to come to the point. He is more or less saying it. Now I will come to the point to reveal the destiny of the anthroposophical society and then make it very clear that this is a group of people um, under, yeah, how to say, coming for fulfilling a kind of Michaelic task and not a group of fighting each other and having personal problems and wishes and motions and so, but they have a task in civilization and what Steiner perceived over the last years that they almost forgot why they came. He reminded them not in the sense of who are you in the sense of individual biographies, but you are here for a certain common aim. So by the anthroposophy, an introduction, by these weekly articles, by the leading thoughts, by the karma lectures, this is a process of awakening of the society. And this society, in this Michaelic intention, has the, also the purpose to carry a, a high school impulse. So the society, a little bit, the wider group, which in itself as a heart organ came with the vision, it came with the mission to create a school for spiritual science in the light of Michael. That means to create an organ where the Michaelic light can come scientifically in the life fields. This is not a society's task. The society task is to enable, to make possible such a school. This school needed then, as Steiner said from the beginning, professional workers. 
They need the best doctors and the best educators and the best natural scientists. These are not all the members. But those in their destiny line is to be specialized in one of the faculties and then we can make it creative. So Steiner collected the best educators to the Waldorf school he had. And of course the educational section wanted to support them. And of course they all need a basic training in anthroposophy, in general anthroposophy and also in spiritual anthroposophy, an esoteric schooling path. They all need it. And then they have to specialize what does it mean in education, in medicine. So 19 plus lessons for all and then going into your professional challenge. And we know that Steiner was developing from the mid of February these class lessons as this kind of inner core organ, but also going into these faculties, into the limbs of the the, this high school building, so the 19 class lessons, yeah, as a hard organ for a whole organism, and the organism is the School for Spiritual Science. So he tried to develop these sections in the year 24. There could be a lot to say, but it's not my time anymore, and shaping the building in which it can happen in the future. And we were very grateful the last few months, being in Dornach, some of you were also here or came, that the building is there for the high school. I mean, nothing against these thousand farmers, but they need it. They needed also a Goethe Anum for commemorating the Koberwitz impulse and bringing it forth. So they, they needed a space and an inspiring space. So the high school is always something spiritual, but also something physical. Universities were always also had buildings. Of course they needed. And also the school of Chartres, the school of Chartres had the cathedral and Ephesus had a site. So now Steiner prepared the sections and the society and of course the building, as I said. Now, to come more or less to an end, maybe you will ask, was it successful these nine months or not? Because, but in some fields, the answer is easy because we can say Kobowitz was a success and we could see it in January when they all came after 100 years. So, and now there will be a new section for social inclusive development and curative education and hopefully in, in December, uh, in October, they will all be here. And so I think without any doubt, um, it was a successful year, but not in all respects. And Steiner said in some of these reflection, we can really say that um, the Christmas conference was well received first of all from the spiritual world, which was not, he could not preview what will happen if he overtakes the chair and so on. But then he said after some month um, that he had to say that he supported or the anthroposophical movement is supported stronger than before from the spiritual hates. And he now can speak in another and more direct way and the demons, they has to be mute. So in a way Steiner was surprised, really also partly surprised that it went so well. It went so well from a spiritual point of view. It also went very well concerning the class lesson and this kind of esoteric tone in Steiner's teaching, he said there is such a lot of echo from the members, from the school members, from, it was well received. With the society, it remained difficult because it was difficult to transform an existing vessel 
in a new one. We always say he refounded the society, but in fact it was already there. So the branches existed and the branch leaders and, and so on. And Elisabeth Friede said it was very difficult. Um, the executive council meetings here in Dornach, they, they had to deal with a lot of existing problems in the old anthroposophical society. And very little positive work has happened from January 24 till October in the so-called Executive Council. That means in the group with Stefan, Mary Steiner, Rudolf Steiner, Elisabeth Friede, Günther Wachsmuth, Ita Wegmann. Only a small amount of positive work, she said. Um, and she also reminded Steiner's harsh judgments about country societies, branches. Friede said really a painful and sad time. This is maybe not what we would have awaited for a new council with Steiner and these wonderful co-workers. And another one said a time of deepest tragedy. Um, and also partly in the group, Friede said it is Friede's opinion that Mary Steiner for her, the Goetheanum and the Pasophy and the society belong to her alone. The other members of the council were merely an annoying addition that Dr. Steiner had wished for. So Friede said Marie Steiner never felt well in this organ. She was used to be the leader of the society over many years with Steiner as a couple, as a married couple later. And now there is Ita Wegmann, there is this Elisabeth Frede, there is this young Günther Wachsmuth. She respected Stefan as a writer, but it's, so at least Frede is saying, so the problems not only in the branches, but also in the heart organ, the problems in the world, I mean, let's say the Many things collapsed as the so-called common attack. This was this association of anthroposophical enterprises. They collapsed, they had to close. And this also meant almost the end of the Zwickau Waldorf School because they were partly got money. It was the end of the Stuttgart anthroposophical clinic. They got no more money from this common attack. And so Steiner said, we are perhaps burying the idea that we had in mind as one of the most sacred, I would say, of founding economic enterprises to serve spiritual life. But the possibility of continuing to do so does not exist anymore. So they had to stop, it was crashed. And so there are many things in the year 24 I could bring many examples, but it is not our topic today. And Steiner got weaker. There is a very moving memory of Ernst Lies, but maybe I won't read, when he accompanied Steiner once in a night journey to Stuttgart. And he was astonished that Steiner needed special food in the car, that he needed weapons and uh, that he needed something to warm him because he was freezing all the time, that he couldn't digest any more normal food. And Ita Webern wrapped him with many things and blankets in the car. And in the morning at four, it is also a very special time, at four o'clock they arrived in Stuttgart and he could see how Steiner was trying to to go there in the house and he was so weak and I saw him through the still open door of the house dragging himself up the banister of the stairs step by step with his hand. So is this Dr. Steiner? And next morning the full program and Steiner fulfilled it but he saw the night aspect or in a way, what will be the end of it? And the end was, and this is also for the closure for today, September 24, the culmination, I would say, of anthroposophy. I know that the terminus 
is used for other hopes and situations, but from um, um, at least a historical perspective, I would say there was a clear culmination in the 20th century, and this was in September 1924, um, when Steiner gave his last courses here. A thousand members, people came. It was just as an atmosphere, a very warm late summer, and all groups came. The actors I mentioned before, the doctors, I mention always them, but also the curative educators as far as they could come, because the children in Lauenstein and Sonnenhof, but um, the teachers as far as they could come, um, all the, the class members as far as they could come. So we know that Steiner gave five courses in parallel to these different groups, some of them try to follow all these courses and some days five lectures a day. And I don't want to stress the heroic aspect, but the atmosphere. So Ernst Weiser, the teacher, said everything was filled with hope and enthusiasm for the future. People sat together in the carpentry workshop like the large student's body of a place of wisdom of old. So an old ancient mystery site, so Weisert had the idea they were sitting all together, and yes, we have some paintings. One often had to think of one of the great paintings of humanity, Raphael's depiction of the school of Athen. It was enormous. Huh? Steiner's 70 lectures in these four weeks, so 48 of them were specialized for these groups, as I mentioned, uh, there were 10 karma lectures for all, for the members. There were five lectures for the, the, the workmen here at the Goethe Anum, even if there was no second Goethe Anum at the moment, but they prepared. There were seven class lessons. And the atmosphere. And he still saw patients in the clinic of Ita Wegmann, and I mentioned those 400 personal um, conversations and um, and 250 people he took in the first class and 200 of them in a personal situation with a ritual dimension in his atelier. But it was an atmosphere, it is well described by some of these members. I want to quote Willem Seilmans, he said in retrospective, in September 24, all of us who attended the new courses in Dornach had the feeling of living far beyond our normal consciousness. We were lifted into other spheres. We all looked different. We saw and heard beyond our own possibilities. When we looked at each other, we said to ourselves, is that him? It was something incredible and indescribable. We were already living in a spiritual world that we naturally couldn't control. There were moments during the last lecture of the pastoral medicine course when Dr. Steiner just radiated love and spirit. So much love and spirit that it was almost difficult to listen to what he was saying. It was probably also an audience in front of which he was able to give himself completely. And this is an enormous formulation to give himself completely. And I had to think of this, um, uh, of this sentence of Steiner, I think it's from the Apocalypse course in those days when he said, something must return that is similar to the work in the ancient mysteries and which was described as the sacrificial surrender of the whole person, the absorption of the whole person in his task. This um, self-sacrifice, when he is describing to give himself completely, I mean not sacrifice in the sense of um, 
Sometimes it's also abused, this word, in a, yeah, I think we know it all. But this kind of being totally identified with the work he had to do, I mean, he loved this work. It's not all a sacrifice in the sense of that he would like to do other things. It was absolute Steiner giving these lectures, bringing this impulse. He was in a way glad and when he saw the people were coming and they take over this impulse and they will go out and do these things. So Steiner never wanted to have holidays or because this was his, his primarily mission. So sacrifice not in the sense of um, yeah, doing unpleasant things, but doing it with his whole entity and with a kind of a weakness physically is was but he came beyond this weakness. So a lot of people described that he couldn't climb any more the hill, that then he needed a car to bring him to the carpentry shop. And it was very difficult for him to go in. It took a lot of time, this long row, and they heard him coming. And it was, and then he was there. And then the first sentences of the lectures, they were difficult. They were unsure if he could do it, but then, then it developed, it developed an hour and then he went away and like this and obviously young and quite speedy. It was a total transformation, but it was not an actor who is playing a transformation, but it was, was in a way, he said to Ita Wegman, those lectures keep me alive. She said, she asked him for reduction concerning his health, but he said, those lectures keep me alive. So this Logos stream, in a way, also kept him in this difficult situation. So I only wanted to mention this because um, maybe good to know that sacrifice, he went fully into this world confrontation in between Michael and Ariman. Um, yeah, a self-fulfilled um, sacrifice. Yeah, the last lecture just to end was for which group? What do you think? I think it's so interesting for the workmen, <laughs> for the workers at the Goethe Arnhem. So 24th of September, I think it's so interesting because Steiner you know, he was born, good to say it again today, um, on the station, um, out of poor parents. And he was a workman all the time. And it made absolutely sense that he died in a carpentry shop. And it made absolute sense that the last group who could talk to him or he could give a kind of advice were the workmen. So they meant the builders of the second Goethe Anu. He felt quite sad to have to cancel the next lecture on Friday the 26th. It was for the members. And also the 27th, there was a meeting with the farmers, which was very sad because it was the first meeting since Kobowitz. He never met them again. And now they brought their results to Dornach, but they had no more power to see them. And also a class lesson was intended, but it never happened. So that was it. But then suddenly on Sunday, the 28th, people heard that he will come and speak. So they all gathered in the carpentry shop, 600 people, and he really came. So they all stood there and he came in a deepest earnestness, very slowly climbed the podium. He took his coat, it was always freezing coat out then on the table of the executive council. There was always this table of the council and he has a very quiet voice at the beginning. And so he gave this last address, only 20 minutes. Yeah, Albert Stefan said, we left that room with an in describable feeling of shock. 
everyone felt that Rudolf Steiner's words had a testamentary character, but no one dared to speak about them. Even to themselves, they kept silent. It was a farewell. That's what Asya Turgenev said. So, this was this last 20 minutes. We will commemorate, but not only commemorate, this um, 20 minutes on Michaelmas this year, 100 years of this last address. Nine months of life, um, and I will end with the words, which we quite often do. <laughs> so today also, it is a personal verse dedicated to Ita Wegman, um, the human being which enabled this nine month and also the Christmas conference before. And I think it's so necessary after all the struggles and debates in the society, now we can clearly see, at least from a historical perspective, that even if people feel connected to Marie Steiner, Albert Steffen and Wachsmuth, and it's all wonderful, but we have all to see all together the importance of Ita Wegmann for making the Christmas conference possible by her question, couldn't there be now the opening of an esoteric school at the Goethe Arnhem? enabling this event to come and all the months then on next to Steiner's side, I mean the doctor, but also the co-worker, absolute in the first class in the Michael school. He really needed her and this was a strong collaboration. And in one of these verses for her, he brings it in words, not only his gratefulness, but also saying this situation with you, with the other one, made something possible. It is not Ita Wegmann who made it possible, or the, the, the qualities described in this verse, the light you will hear, the warmth, and also the air. She was not creating light. She was not creating warmth, she was not creating air, but in this being together and working together, something could come in the, if, in the etheric world. It has a little bit to do with the mystery in between I and you, it, a little bit to do with the Emmaus mystery, I would say, with the mystery of the coming of Christ in the ether, which has a lot to do with a real understanding of what is dialogue, not only by speaking, but by living, that something could come. And this is what happened and how Steiner could go on. And so honoring Ita Wegmann, but not so much as a person, but also commemorating her or integrating or including her tonight as Steiner was a human being, he's born today, born into mankind, and human beings need the other one. And maybe not only the other one, but really there are epochs of life where there is support needed. And also he needed support or co-workership with Christian Morgenstern for years and with others, aided Marion in this house. And now at the end, it was very much Ita Wegmann. Marie Steiner was in a way a companion all the time. And for her, she had to realize that others come and had also an importance for a certain time. And then Marie, Edith Marion had to die, but she was absolutely important and Marie Steiner had to realize that it happened and it was needed. So the verse at the end for Ita Wegmann, but also a little bit the mystery of being human, I would say, and Steiner was not a master in, in, in the heavens, but he was human, essentially human. Support shall be for me your understanding, your love, 
and faithfulness. I see grow up out of your understanding the light that shines to me. I see grow up out of your love the warmth that blesses me. I see grow up out of your faithfulness the air that enlivens me. Thank you very much. We had a serious topic, but also a birthday topic. Thank you very much for being here and hopefully also in the, in the wide world and that we can yeah, take some quality out of this evening for what we have to do in 24 and in the coming times and that it's kind of encouraging our own striving. We are now here responsible for what is the anthroposophical impulse and how it will come to the future. So hopefully not only a Rudolf Steiner um, respectful um, evening, but also an encouraging for making the Christmas impulse true in our biography and the forthcoming future. Thank you very much.